Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Miscavige, and here we go. Let me call you, sweetheart. I'm in love with you. Let me hear you whisper that you love me too. Keep the love light burning in your eyes so true. Let me call you, sweetheart. I'm in love with you. Now, there's a reason I sang that, and it's not to show you how I sound singing. But we took in a feral cat about a month ago, and that is the song I sing to her every time I go in the room that's dedicated to her. She's a little cat. My wife has been feeding her for about eight months, and we thought there's no way this cat is going to live through another winter. So we took her in and we're domesticating her. And when I sing that song, she closes her eyes and sometimes she'll put her head down and listen to it. Anyway, that's my latest thing. And uh, I'm looking forward to domesticating her and introducing her to our other cat, Frank. Now, you may have guessed this, but if you haven't, this is actually Life After Scientology. And I'm Ron Miscavige, I'm your host. And we have a very special guest on for you today. As a matter of fact, she's your favorite guest, actually by statistic. And we have a subject which I'm sure you're gonna enjoy being enlightened on. Before I do that, let me get into a little business and that is this. If you're not a subscriber, could you please do so and hit the little bell there so when we have a new show, you'll be notified. And if you want to contribute to the ongoingness of this and the other shows I do, just go to therealronmiscavige.com and you can become a Patreon and contribute and help out to defray some of the expenses we have. So, without any further words or business, please welcome Karen de la Curie. Good afternoon, Karen, and thanks for coming on. Hello, everybody. Hello. So, I guess I was going to introduce it, but why don't you, because this is a... This is a high profile, well, as a matter of fact, the most high profile celebrity Scientologist in the world. And we want to talk about some of the things that go on that just don't seem to be kosher. And to get in this, let's put it this way. We're going to talk about Tom Cruise. He receives special favors and luxury living like no other Scientologist does. Karen, you want to take that up right, right out of the box? Yeah, recently Tom Cruise was in London and he did a fun little video of him outside Buckingham Palace where he was recognized and he did all this clip and sent it to the media. The media reported it, but also added a paragraph that while he was in England, he went to St. Hill Manor and stayed in this luxurious quarters he has on this tax-free <laughs> Hollywood movie star suite at St. Hill Manor. He couldn't even be in London for two, three days without going into a Scientology property. You know, I lost my son at 27 years old to the cult, and I just cannot stomach a worldwide movie star endorsing and shilling and promoting the cult on autopilot. Perhaps he's doing it subconsciously. Perhaps it's just so habitual, he's not even thinking what he's doing. Well, I, I actually, no, I, I think you hit the point right there. He's not thinking what he's doing. He's not thinking what he's doing because if he thought about it and thought about all the things that we've talked about, and I say we, meaning me, you, Leah Remini, Mike Rinder, Tom DeVock, Chris Shelton, all the people who come on and have other people on who have been abused by the church and had their families ripped apart, when you're promoting the church, yeah. you might be conscious or unconscious of it. 
you're promoting that. I don't, I don't know if it's this quid pro quo. Well, he, he gets so many unusual favors from the cult. I want to get into some unusual favors that Tom Cruise has received on orders of David Miscavige, who owns Tom Cruise. Can you give me a comment on that? <laughs> well, no, but I, I would like to backtrack just for one second oh. and yeah. say this. There was one point when Tom received his Medal of Valor in mm -hmm. St. Hill. I was at that event, and David said he was the most dedicated Scientologist he knows. Now, let me tell you something. I was in the Sea Organization at the time. I worked from morning till night, seven days a week, received very few amenities, you know, even on the holidays. If we got off like on morning or maybe in the evening on Christmas, that was standard. Some days we got the, sometimes we got the whole day off. The food wasn't the greatest. I give credit to the people who worked in the galley. They tried to do the most they could with the allocation they had for food. And despite all that, all of us there worked hard all the time. Mm -hmm. So when he said that, here's a guy, he makes movies. His spare time is not taken up, you know, going and stuffing CDs in the packing out at the, sin, at the castle like we did on our, well, not spare time in, you know, in a regular day. And to say he was the most dedicated, I think it pushed a lot of people's noses out of the joint who were in the Sea Org at the time. Well, me for one. What an insult. What yeah. an insult to a Sea Org member that gets no day off, that gets no annual leave, that receives a pittance, $20, $25 when the mostly the revenue is down, works like a slave, gets sleep deprivation, is ordered to abort a baby if the spouse gets pregnant, uh, is punished within an inch of their lives for broad, like the blob punishment. Somebody at gold does something. So the whole of gold is in yeah. the Lord. Everybody is being conditioned right up to this ritual of falling on your sword and writing up how evil you are and every other week writing up your crimes. What crimes can you actually commit? You don't, you, you don't have time to commit crimes. What the hell is this? You know, you don't but have time to. Tom Cruise subconsciously is constantly endorsing and promoting this monster, this, this cruel, hideous entity called the cult of Scientology. And right. I, I, I just can't stand it. However, I do want to say that Tom is more than deluded. Do you know a guy called Michael Dogen? You know, I never met him, Karen, but I know of him. Yeah, that, that's true. He, he was a, a spy for, for the church yeah. with Tom, well, wasn't he? Many people don't know the fact that Tom actually withdrew and left Scientology from 1991 to 2001, that's 10 years, he just withdrew. He was not participating. And a spy was installed in Tom's life. A spy, a mole. And this guy's name was Michael Dovin, a dedicated Scientologist who <clears throat> Everything that happened with Tom to your son, David Miscavige. Every fight he had with Nicole, every mood he had, every temper tantrum he had, everything and anything going on in Tom's life was reported to David Miscavige. And David Miscavige wanted Tom to reach back into Scientology. He didn't want to be the first person inviting Tom back. Right. So a complete plan was made on how to drop the hint for Tom to reach back into Scientology. This was all 
very, very carefully programmed. I mean, Tom Cruise does have star power. How yeah. many people on planet Earth can make a billion dollars per studio in a couple of months? This. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. He was the a guy is. You know, he's a... However, Marty Rathburn reported that when Tom Cruise was getting audited at Celebrity Center, there was a very hidden microphone and camera, completely hidden. Tom Cruise had no knowledge of it. And every word he said in session was recorded, filmed with full audio. Now, let me make a point on that for our audience. Mm -hmm. Today's security checks or auditing takes place in auditing rooms, and there is a camera pointed at the e-meter, pointed at the person, but it's out in the open. It isn't hidden. So the pre-clear or the person going in to receive the auditing or counseling knows that this is going on. In the case with Tom, these were hidden, so he didn't know that that was going on. Tom didn't know what was that, That's a difference there. Mm -hmm. And Rathbun reported he was number two in a circle that in the evenings when David Miscavige had his little group around him, <laughs> he would drink scotch and he would actually reveal little tidbits of Tom's sexuality and what Tom thought he had given up in the sanctity of a session. Wow. It was now, laughed at. It was joked about. It was mocked. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Tom has any way that he would know about this. Or do you think that there's a filter put on him by people around him to keep him away from stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just incomprehensible. But let's go wider on that. People don't realize that when they get counseling in the cult of Scientology, everybody is on camera, like you said. Yeah. All the time. Every word you say is recorded. There is no priest penitent privilege as if, you know, they've screamed in the law courts, oh, we can't give you that, that's priest penitent privilege in the Laura Laura Deakman lawsuit, this was, oh, we can't turn over the folders because it's all priest penitent. Rubbish. Recorded and watched by the many. So if anybody is giving up a, a, a withhold, a secret, something they kept back and didn't share, remember that in the cult of Scientology, you're on camera for everything you ever told them. Not to mention that the counselor is extensively writing down what you say. Jeez, is that a turn off? <laughs> Let me tell you, it, it goes even further than that because this information is then shared with the registrars, the people who sell you services. Yeah. So they know of your deeper withholds that you've given up or yeah. things that maybe you wouldn't want to be known. The registrars know this. So when they're trying to get you to, con you know, contribute more money for more auditing, they have like an inside idea as to what is going to get you moving toward giving them money. It's, it's really they bad. They are so brazen that they, uh, the, let me give you a short little anecdote. There was a guy and his secret withhold was he had a little savings account of $15,000 that the Ridges didn't know about. This was, you know, they, they, they ask you, well, what have you got? What is, what is, what is your bank balance? What is your savings? And he had this little hidden $15,000 savings account. And he gave it up in a session on camera, revealing he had the 15000 When he came out of session, he was walked to the registrar, and the registrar said, hey, that 15000 you have, the registrar didn't even hide the fact that within minutes of him confessing to
to his secret account. The registrar knew about it. <gasps> this guy, I mean, he's out of Scientology now. He's been talking, you know, he's, he's gone. But this was the final straw. He just gave that up in session. And yeah. in three minutes, the salespeople knew he had a hidden 15,000. He realized <laughs> this was an eye opener to him. And it was a make break point of him walking out the door. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, in that case, it was worth it. Yeah. It was worth it for them to come after him for the 15 G's. And if he says, wait a minute, this is BS. I'm the hell out of here. See you later. <laughs> what, whatever's going to give you that final uh, epiphany or the, the thing that's saying, hey, wait a minute, I've been conned. This is no good. And I'll tell you, we all have been conned. I'll, I'll plead guilty of that. I was a Kool-Aid drinker for many years. I used to do videos telling people why they should buy the lectures. And they were damn good videos, too. I made up a course to show new people how to sell these videos. And it was used widely. So here I am. Um, I don't know if you'd say making up the damage, but I do get people on to expose them so I can do my best to try to keep anybody from going in who's considering going into Scientology. Or if somebody's sneaking a look at this, I hope they say, you know what, I'm out. And this is the reason I do it, Karen. Well, yeah, 